Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swell Watch on SurfingMagazine.com. Time for another update on what we can expect for the rest of this winter, what's going into spring, and even possibly what we may expect for this coming winter in the way of weather and waves. We've had definitely a very wet winter so far, and a lot of questions coming out. It's like, well, we're not in El Nino. Why are we getting so much rain? Are we going to see even more rain? What's going on? People have asked about the MJO, what influence that has on it. Uh, what's really going to happen, though, as we start getting into March? Are we really going to dry out? Are we going to start seeing some cleaner surface all this stuff going to eventually clean up well i've been doing a lot of digging trying to get up as much information as i can for you supplementing my reports that you can always find on forecast.surfingmagazine.com so right now let's dive deep into it and see what's actually going on with the weather and the waves this is what's going on right now Let's start this off with a reference of what we've actually seen right at LAX. This is kind of then taking the middle ground for rain. So we can start seeing as we start this out. At the beginning of this graph, this is uh, December of 2016. And at the very end, this is just about where we are right now. It's actually the totals on the 19th of, uh, of February. We can see that January, which is in this time frame right about here, we start seeing all this here. That's when we had most of our rain. We had a little bit right before Christmas, as you might remember. We had some major rain events. We did have a very major one that happened on the uh, 22nd of, of uh, January. And then also we had a very major one that just happened this last Friday. Now bear in mind, this total here um, is from LAX and it's taken at the middle ground. Once again, there was a lot more rain that fell north of LA, but a lot less that fell south. So this is taking the middle ground and we're gonna use this as a point of reference to what's really going on, what we might be able to expect. So first off, just one thing to note, a lot of rain events that did happen in January, not so many in February, but when they did fall, we had a pretty good amount, especially this last one that came our way. So this was caused mostly this winter by atmospheric river patterns. And you've probably seen me post this before on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Nathan Todd Cool. Um, and I've also talked about this on my forecast on forecast.surfingmagazine.com. Here's low pressure system. It just parked off the coast up here off of Oregon uh, by Washington. And here's a tropical plume that it's tapping into. So a lot of tropical moisture that just keeps bringing in, bringing in, bringing in. And that's feeding the rain. So what's happening is we have low pressure that's dominating dominating this area, and that's very typical during a neutral year, and especially sometimes during a uh, El Nino year, although El Nino will tend to dominate more of the northern Pacific. We can see that happening again. This was what brought the uh, most major storm our way. And we can see that this was one low pressure system. It's dominated by a large one, kind of hard to see here. Here is the plume, and you can see how it came through. This is just dividing Southern California here, going up just north of Point Conception, tapping into this tropical plume, and as it did, it thickened it up, thickened it up, caused a lot of lift, and we got ourselves some precipitation. So that's what caused it. Once again, atmospheric river patterns were the name of the game this winter, and that's what's bringing us most of our rain. If we take a look at the jet stream, you can see that this is, if you're taking a close look here, this is the, the west coast. This is California down here. This is Baja. So when the jet stream was coming out of the western Pacific, hey, that looks good, and still wasn't holding together because this isn't really El Nino. We haven't seen an entire dominance of low pressure up in the uh, Gulf of Alaska. But look at the low pressure here. So that caused, this was for the big rain event that happened on 22 January. You can see why. This was another atmospheric river pattern. Low pressure sitting here going counterclockwise. The jet stream was located here, and of course that brought in some other conditions along with it. But what we had most importantly for the rain was a low pressure system sitting there. And the same thing goes then when we take a look at what happened. Let me go back one on just this here. We can see that this was on the about the 17th, 18th of uh, of February, and this brought in then that atmospheric river. Once again, a deep trough of low pressure, tapping into tropical moisture, bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up. So even though we had somewhat of an ideally placed jet, this is what was really causing it. Now, atmospheric river patterns, you would think, well, it's El Nino, we should be seeing a lot of rain. No, El Nino lowers the latitude of the jet stream to uh, increase the likelihood that when we take a look at the jet stream, sorry about that, when we take a look at the jet stream, that the jet stream would stay contiguous as it goes across. You can see it didn't do that really here. So when we take a look at that frequency of El Nino, we still could have atmospheric river patterns because we do have low pressure dominating the Gulf of Alaska. And if one area of low pressure sits and spins for a while, like it did here off the coast of Oregon, then we could get atmospheric river patterns because also the atmosphere tends to be more laden with moisture coming off of a warmer tropical Pacific. 
during a neutral year, which we have actually been in. It hasn't really been a La Nina, though. It's still about 24% of uh, when we take a look at all the different atmospheric rivers. This is from a, uh, a study from the Journal Science, uh, excuse me, Journal uh, uh, Climate, by the way, and I'll show you a little bit more on that in just a second. But the neutral years, like we're basically into now, we still have a good chance of seeing atmospheric river patterns. In fact, the great uh, flood of 1862, I believe it was, in California. Anyways, the great California flood, they do know in the 1800s that it was not tied to an El Nino. It was more of a neutral year. So we're seeing that once again, that pattern of atmospheric rivers. That uh, study I mentioned in the uh, journal Climate, I was looking into also the influence of MJO, and I'll get to what that is in just a second, but for those interested, there does seem to be somewhat of a causal link to the MJO and the possibility for atmospheric river formations, but not exactly what we may think. So let's take a closer look at that. For those that aren't familiar with the MJO, it's the cyclical pattern that falls around the planet, and in this particular paper was written by, you can see at the top there, John Gottschalk from NOAA, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Anyways, you can see that it's a cyclic pattern. It goes around just weeks at a time, constantly around the equator. It's stormy in one place, and on the other side of the planet, it would not be stormy. So this could influence a lot of things. It doesn't cause El Nino. It can help intensify an El Nino in the springtime because of uh, more winds that it could be causing in the Western Pacific to uh, send more warm water um, over to uh, the Eastern Equatorial Pacific. But when it really comes to atmospheric rivers, this is something that's still not really quite understood, but there does seem to be some causal link. But it still comes into question this time around. This is a very confusing model for those that are unfamiliar with it, showing RMMI-1 and RMM-2. And this is showing the uh, amount of cloudiness and temperatures and whatnot to get somewhat of an index. How strong is that MGO? Where it is? And so zones seven and eight are what we're interested in. This is when it starts entering the Western Pacific. This is when it gets closer to us over here on the West Coast. And what could it do? And we see here that this time around, this red line here, this is February. And sure enough, February 17th, major rain event, we had a very strong MJO. Let's take a closer look at that. Very strong MJO signal was there. But when we take a, a look just a year before, we still have somewhat of a strong MJO during the month of January, which is when, of course, we got rainfall. So did that really cause the atmospheric rivers that we started seeing over January and into February? Well, when we take a look at the rain, remember January had a lot of rain. February had a very major rain event. But when we take a look then at what was going on in January of this year in the purple line, it really didn't do much. So is the MJO actually to blame for this? Is it a contributor? That's something that's still unknown. So one of the reasons, just for the record, that I really don't count on the MJO for doing long range forecasting, although it is something to be watched and could have an influence and more so over ENSO. Speaking of which, the ENSO signal that we're taking a look at right now has been on the low side. So this right now, this was uh, the, the uh, El Nino of uh, last year. And we started seeing that uh, really start to influence in 2015. 2016, yeah, we started seeing a bit of a drop off in that. And it was not really a La Nina, but uh, started picking up a little bit. One of the major influences has been the PDO. This is kind of El Nino's bigger brother. When it's warm, it's more of a, like an El Nino, and it can influence more El Ninos. And for the last few years, it's been very positive. So when we start overlaying that, we can see that, yes, we do have a trend to El Nino, and we've had a very strong uh, PDO. In fact, the PDO, this is looking over more years from 1981 through 2016, positive PDOs over the last few years. When we were in the drought, we had negative PDOs. So now that we're in a very positive PDO, which we can see here and also here, the, this likelihood of El Nino to a resurge is very high. So in fact, take a look where we are. This is right, and this is just uh, today, as a matter of fact, uh, 20th of February, 2017. we got warm water starting to gather again in the equatorial Pacific. So El Nino seems to be on the rise already, and it's only February. In fact, taking a look at the long-range models here, we can see that where we are right now, this is uh, where we're sitting today. We can see that we came out of that, you can consider it maybe a weak La Nina. I would consider it more of an ENSO neutral. We came out of that, and it looks like, according to all models, we could definitely be up to uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius anomalous by the end of the year. We're talking about levels that would be similar to the 97-98 El Nino. 
So that's not all though that's uh, got our attention. And of course, one of the big things is what do we have in the way of uh, atmosphere and are, uh, are the atmospheric river patterns gonna continue? Do we have the fuel for that? So this is taking a look at uh, humidity in the atmosphere. As we move this forward through time, we can see that there's still a lot of humidity. We can see that there's still a river pattern right now that's being drawn in uh, to California. But that is looking to be disrupted somewhat. High pressure, remember those undulations in the jet stream are not going to necessarily stick with us so we need to have low pressure stay there and look at that low pressure once again comes into play this is looking out Saturday the 25th more low pressure comes down we've still got an atmospheric river going on so yeah we could definitely see more atmospheric rain but is it really going to be that powerful some models show here yes we could see a lot of humidity remember this isn't precipitation this is humidity drawn from the atmospheric river look at the high pressure though wanting to come back in here and so when we go forward in time still a lot of moisture but there could be some disruption so when we take a look closer then at the jet stream and what's responsible for that here's where we are now we can see that we've got that low pressure sitting here we can see that's kind of what's been driving the atmospheric river but watch what happens as we move the models forward in time we basically see chaos in the jet stream now this isn't good news for surf and it's not good news for what we would normally expect out of an el nino storm el nino storms tend to come out of the western pacific and they follow the jet stream along this is the california and the west coast right here that's the Western Pacific. Well, you can see we get these deep undulations. So it's not really helping to guide Western Pacific storms, but there always seems to be low pressure coming in right off the coast of Oregon and, uh, and Washington. And we still have this humid air coming in off the jet. So we still have the possibility for more atmospheric river storms, but we just don't have a jet holding together very well for what could be then the uh, bigger El Nino type storms. And of course for swell. Let's take a closer look at that relative vorticity map here and you can see red low pressure blue high pressure and watch we do get some wild undulations here in the jet stream but if you notice there's always low pressure that seems to want to come down across the west coast you can see a big one here for me that's another atmospheric river pattern setting up for this weekend and we can see that too when we move the models forward in time on the whams so taking a look at where it really matters most, uh, what's going to happen in the way of waves. Well, first off, before we get to that atmospheric river, watch the Western Pacific. Hey, look at that. That's some great stuff. Oh, no, it hits the jet stream and boom, it just gets blown all to heck. So it doesn't really have a chance to go across and build. So any of these storms coming out of the Western Pacific, they're not looking to big, big swell makers at all for California. So instead, we're lo looking at more localized wind swell or low pressure systems that would form here. And sure enough, as that atmospheric river pattern starts to form so does the wind and so does then swell as you can see here so that's a localized wind swell that would definitely be hitting then later uh, about the beginning of the month so anyways for swell for the long term as long as we have this major disruption in the jet stream with things just kind of going hog wild we don't have very good guidance of storms coming out of the western pacific then of course that really hinders us in the way of waves as far as weather is concerned well more atmospheric river patterns all we need is just low pressure sitting off the coast here the atmosphere is definitely very laden with moisture so as long as we have that going on we could definitely see more rain in Southern California now bear in mind it's almost impossible to forecast weather two or three weeks out it's nearly in completely impossible to forecast uh, weather also for the end of the year but look what's happening right now uh, everything is still conducive for atmospheric river patterns the jet stream though is all over the place so there's nothing really solid on what could happen it's very hard to judge when the jet stream starts doing these wild undulations because we have no guarantee of a Western Pacific storm making it all the way over here. So swell, you can almost nix that when it starts coming down to it. Sorry about that. As far as weather though, well, as long as we can tap into a very moist atmosphere, which we have right now, and we can get more low pressure systems just even dropping down from Canada and parking themselves off of the coast of Oregon and, uh, and Washington, then yes, we could definitely see more rain in Southern California if though the jet stream near to our area can stay low enough and allow those low pressure systems to dive farther south to be able to tap into that tropical moisture still a lot of ifs does though look like we could still get more rain on the way we definitely have broken some records in some cases i'll cover that another time but as far as then looking at for the rest of the year well, we could be going into a definitely another El Nino. And that'd be great news for a lot of things. First, we'd have a chance to dry out over the summer months. Uh, over the summer months, we could then possibly see more hurricane activity for more hurricane swells. 
Hurricane activity, I should preface, would be in the eastern Pacific, and of course usually doesn't do any danger on landfall, but does bring uh, beneficial swells to uh, California. And then of course then we could get more rainfall and more winter swells from El Nino this coming winter. But it's a lot of ifs, and I've got a lot to cover on this. It's keeping me busy so far this winter, and I got a lot more on my reports on forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. And of course, if you like this video, and if you want to see more of them, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Well, thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, take care, be safe, and smile in the lineup.